hey, this is the odd man. I'm at Lincoln City playing finders keepers for glass floats. And I have multiple objectives today. First is that I'm planning to do a run. I'm here for the weekend. I'm here for three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I plan to run seven miles each day. The town is seven miles long, so I'll run up to the end of the town and then walk back. Should be about two hours for the run and four hours for the walk back. I'm hoping to do that each of the three days, which is really pushing my luck. So that's the first goal. The second part of the goal, I brought a backpack. I signed up to do an adventure race with my daughter on the East Coast in April. So I'm going to run with the backpack on. And it's probably about 10 pounds, which is more than I typically obviously carry. Normally I don't carry a backpack at all. So that's going to be a challenge and it's going to make the run part harder. The other thing about the run part is that it's three days in a row. And I don't recover like I used to, so that sort of adds to the challenge. Another piece of this is that Lincoln City has something called Finders Keepers. And Finders Keepers is a program where they hide, well, they don't hide them, they just set, put about 3,000 glass balls out on the beach every year. The reason I'm here this weekend is this is a weekend with a what they call a special drop. So they're going to put 100 extra balls out, 100 extra glass balls out, glass floats out this weekend. So I'm hoping that with a two hour run and a four hour walk each of the three days, I should be able to find a lot of those, right? And I don't want them. I'm not going to take them home. I just think it's fun to find them. The one I have, I've owned for years and I can't remember where it came from. So it should be fun as far as just finding the glass floats. It's kind of like Easter eggs, you know? Okay, so this Finders Keepers program started in 1997. And in 2022, there were 11 different glass artisans involved in making the floats for the program. One of them was this one that I visited while I was there. They have their float ferries that hide the floats anywhere on the beach. And they have sort of basic rules, you know, they're hidden only during the day, they're between the high tide line and the beach embankment, which kind of limits where they can go. They're put out every day, rain or shine. They're hidden throughout the day. And each float is numbered. And they ask you to register them, and they ask you to limit it to one float per person per year. Overall, it seems like a great idea and quite fun. What do you think? Are there any glass balls hidden out here? I'm not looking through that. I'm hoping I'll run across these incidentally. Yep, all of those footprints are since high tide, which was not more than two hours ago. So I ran up the beach and then I walk back off to the side as much as I can in these grassy areas because that's where they're hiding the glass balls apparently, the floats. But you can see I'm a long ways from the first guy being through here. Is this one? Is this one? Here I am. Up taking refuge with the rest of the glass float hunters. The lady in green way down there just found one. <laughs> cool, well, tell me about it. So you found two, you found, yeah. were they up in the brush or were they down? Yeah, I found them hiding in here. This one was hiding in here and then this one was my... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I had been down to see my chihuahua and I got golfed by a wave. So nice. <laughs> nice, what numbers are they? Uh, 12. 12? Wow, that's a low number. 
and seven twenty nine. Seven twenty nine. Cool. I didn't find even one glass ball on this trip, but that's okay. I have plenty. All right, I have my backpack and my weird camo rain pants and saying goodbye to the car for a while. Wow, the backpack makes it much harder and the sand isn't really hard, but I mean, it's not hard at all. It's kind of tough to run in it. Oh. <laughs>
as I'm filming this, it's Sunday. I'm sitting here drinking a cup of tea, sitting in the yurt at South Beach State Park, thinking about my run for this afternoon. I've already done two runs. I did one Friday that was grand total about 11 miles, and yesterday I did 13 miles. And these were typically run up, walk back. But I'm wearing the backpack, so they're slow. And I was doing them generally very close to high tide, so I spent a lot of time taking refuge from the waves and climbing up on the bank. So both of them were pretty slow. Carrying the backpack, I'm slow anyway, so, you know, that's <laughs> the um, escaping the waves is more of an excuse than it is a real reason for how slow it was. So I decided that for this afternoon, I should go much later in the day. So I'm going to start about 3 o'clock. Low tide is at 8. The weather's supposed to be awful. High winds and rain. It's going to get dark early. I'm going to start at 3 and hopefully be done by 7 or 8. But it's early January, so it's going to be dark by, you know, 4.30 or so. And here's how those went. It is totally nasty out. I'm just starting. I'm gonna get wet, but hopefully between the raincoat and my classy rain pants, it won't be awful. It's cold, it's about 45 degrees, pouring down rain, quite windy. I've seen a little bit of thunder and lightning. I saw some hail earlier. Hopefully the tide's low enough I can get around those two points without getting hung up. So, could be an adventure. Hopefully not too much of an adventure. Look at this, there's still people out here hunting for those glass balls. Oh yeah, it looks like the tide's low enough to get around this first point for sure. We're not far into the run. Only a mile or two, a mile and a half even. But we have a little reprieve in the weather. That was the last point that might have provided an impediment to doing the entire length of this deal. Wow, I really feel like I'm cheating. And in a way I am. I'm headed northbound with a strong southbound wind at my back. Holy crap, blew so hard it almost knocked me down. So I made it the 6.8 miles from Taft up here almost to the very end at Road's End. It's just about dark, so I made reasonably good time. I was hoping that I would get here before it got dark and then I could have a snack and turn around with headlamp on. I think my time was better than it should have been because I did have quite the, I did have quite the boost behind me with the wind. Now I just have to walk the 6.8 miles back. I may have been happy to have the wind at my back on the way up here, but the walk back is going to be a nightmare. Whew, it is cold and hard. It's still quite windy out on the beach, but it's time to put on a headlamp. This is a long, dark section of coast. Now that I'm south of D River. But I stopped there to take a break. Had a drink, ate a snack, sat down, to, rested for a few minutes. 
but it was really hard to get going again thinking about stepping out into this wind because it is just brutal but it's only six o'clock so I shouldn't have any trouble getting there but man I have to push hard to make any progress against this wind it's nasty this is the first point that I had to get around south of D River it was nice to be a little protected in there out of the wind behind that point too but no more This is the inn at Spanish Head, so I'm just right at the end. I need to go around that pile of rocks out there. And it's, I don't know, eight tenths of a mile or something from there to the car. This walk was much more difficult than anticipated. Partly because I was trying to make really good time. Partly because I'm tired after doing the 6.8 mile run and partly because of the wind. Man, it was brutal. It's kind of settled down a little bit now down at this end, so that's nice. But overall, this was fun. I, I love getting out on the beach in the dark. Moe's is one of my favorite places for chowder. I stopped in here one day for beer and a bowl of chowder. It's supposed to rain pretty hard all weekend, so I ran out a yurt. I rented a yurt for the occasion. And in a hugely decadent way, it has heat. Yay! I'm going home This is the odd man, out.